Hey guys, it's Feats here with some different content. Today I'd like to talk about the state of For Honor. It's been over a month since release, and I kind of want to talk about how I feel about the game currently. For starters, I absolutely love For Honor. From the first alpha test, I've known this would be a game that I would enjoy greatly, and this still remains true. But I do have some gripes with the game in its current state. Let's talk about the servers, or lack of for starters. I don't mind peer-to-peer -peer hosting in the slightest. In fact, it can absolutely work great in the right circumstances, and I think for 1v1s, provided you're in the same region, it works flawlessly 90% of the time. In game modes with multiple players, however, this is where it shows its flaws. In brawls, it's not too noticeable, but in 4v4 it certainly is. The main issue is when someone leaves, this causes a host migration, which currently can cause a myriad of issues which includes all players being booted from a game. If you haven't encountered these issues yet, then you are one of the lucky few. Rather than focusing on what Ubisoft should have done from the start, let's focus on what they can do to improve. Firstly, there needs to be some sort of penalty for leaving games, as currently, if you don't like the way a match is going, you can just leave and go on to the next. Adding a penalty would most likely reduce the leave rates and we would see less connection issues due to host migrations. Secondly, if there are players in a game with an unstable correction, connection, then get rid of them. If someone is just too unstable to play, please remove them from the game to prevent them from having an effect on others. On the matchmaking topic, why won't lobbies just fill between games? As of right now, you would be lucky to stick with the same lobby for multiple games. It just doesn't happen. And considering the fix is so simple, this should be a non-issue. Let's talk about class balance. Currently, class balance seems to be what I would consider three tiers. Great, good, and not so good. The good characters being Peacekeeper, Warden, sorry, the great classes being Peacekeeper, Warden, and Warlord, as these seem to be the outlying very strong classes. The not so good category, in my opinion, encapsulates both the Lawbringer and the Raider, with this being more apparent on the Lawbringer. The rest of the classes are somewhere in the middle, in my opinion. Let's take the two outliers, Peacekeeper and Lawbringer, as these are two classes at both ends of the spectrum. Lawbringer in its current state struggles heavily in 1v1 situations due to its lack of punish from moves. Take the Shove for example. Compare it to Warlord Headbutt, similar attacks except the Warlord has a guaranteed punish from it, whereas the Lawbringer does not. Whilst guard speed is annoying, I do not think this is the largest issue. Peacekeeper, on the other hand, is seen as one of the strongest, if not the strongest class due to how fast and hard-hitting its light attacks are. On the topic of punishment, I currently think there are classes that can punish a little too hard. Take Shigoki, for example. A guard break into a wall results in him being able to deal huge damage to his opponent whilst healing himself. That is an incredible advantage to gain, especially in a 1v1. Compare it to Warden, for example, who can do a single overhead heavy in the exact same situation. That is a huge difference in damage potential for similar situations. For the out of stamina guard breaks, we have Valkyrie being able to do insane amounts of damage by keeping her opponent on the ground for long periods, which compared to most other classes is just a free hit or two when they're on the ground. Ubisoft has already mentioned balancing some classes and I'm sure as we get closer to having ranked modes in the game, we will see these gaps between the top and the bottom get closer than they currently are. Next, I want to talk about gear and the fiasco that it currently is. I do not like gear in its current format. Not in the slightest. Or more importantly, I don't like how matchmaking works with gear. In its current format, it is very possible for Rep 1 players with little to no gear to be matched against Rep 3 players with maxed out gear. This is a huge issue. Ubisoft has already talked about toning down revenge game rates, but I would like to see something done about unfair matchmaking and trying to prevent these situations. Perhaps class-based matchmaking with pre-chosen characters rather than choosing after a game has been found would be more suitable. Let's talk about microtransactions and the current cost of appearance and gear. Someone, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it was on Reddit, I'll try and include a link, valued all the customizable options if you were to buy steel packs around 500 to 700 pounds, might have been dollars, or... I mean, I mean that, that's, that's insane. Considering the rate at which we earn steel in game, it would take an incredibly long time to unlock them all. I understand the need to keep the game alive through microtransactions, but in my opinion this is a little over the top. 
Overall, I do love the game and think its combat system is incredibly praiseworthy. And if Ubisoft can keep players entertained by balancing the game, adding more competitive game modes and DLC down the line like they did with Rainbow Six, I think we should see a healthy community for the game. Thanks for listening guys, and if you enjoyed the content that's absolutely great. If not, leave me a comment telling me why. Feeds out.